Hello viewers, welcome back to CC Gurukul Lectures. I am Dr. Sanawar Soham from Department of Botany, Kalindi College, University of Delhi. And I was discussing about botanical gardens of the world and India in the previous lecture of plant systematic series. I will be continuing with some of the examples of botanical gardens of world and in India in the upcoming lecture. So, the essential elements of successful greenhouse as I was discussing which is an important part of botanical gardens are environment, are heat, humidity, ventilation, light and method of arranging plants. The heating, humidifying, watering and introduction of nutrients are all done automatically in the green and glass house in the botanical garden and apart from green and glass house a botanical garden should possess phytotrons and conservatories as well. All of these should be architecturally attractive and well maintained so that rare and endangered plants as well as plants of ornamental, medicinal and horticultural importance are well maintained. Special attention should be given to cacti, succulents, orchids, etc. The first garden for medicinal plants was established by an Italian professor of botany, Luca Guinea, and this was known as Psychic Garden, and it was based on the idea that all plants had been put on earth by God for our use. Now, what are the role of botanical garden? First one is to cultivate and maintain plants of interest on scientific basis. To show vegetation of the world on geographical characteristics that is Himalayan flora, alpine flora etc. To maintain plants which are in danger of extinction and save species. Also to plan germ plasm collection. It also serves as a research center in various fields. It also faci facilitates taxonomic studies by preserved and live plants. It promotes educational programs and research in experimental botany and ornamental horticulture. Now, some of the examples of botanical garden are number one, as I had already discussed, the Royal Botanic Garden Q. It is monumental institution in the world. It has most modern and well equipped laboratories and collection of rare plants. This garden is situated on the bank of River Thames in London, UK. The garden extends over 200 acres of land which is beautifully planned. This is one of the chief attraction of the world and is regarded as very precious. Recently, it has been felt that the garden is suffering due to pollution in England and also the soil is not suitable enough for the growth of several rare plants. This slide shows the Royal Botanic Garden, Kew, London and herbarium of this botanic garden as I had already discussed houses 6.5 million specimens and thus it is the largest herbarium of the world. The arbiter arbitorium has more than 7,000 species and varieties. There are about 13,000 uh, species and varieties growing in the glass house and around 80,000 herbace herbarious species which are growing in the outdoor garden. The layout of Q includes the collection of many many plants such as willows, oak, elm, cedar, lilies, Japanese cedar, roses, pears, crab apples, acacia etc etc. The special gardens at Kew comprise rhododendron collections, the bamboo garden, chalk garden, rock garden, shrub garden, heath garden and a rosary. The splendid greenhouse in the Kew garden include a palm house, fernery, water lily house, alpine house and temperature house. Some of the important publications of Royal Botanic Garden are Flora of British India, Q bulletin and index coences. Now let's move on to the next part 
that is taxonomic documentation. Now we know that identification is integral to all taxonomic works and most often the identification of any plant specimen is done by comparison with an authentic plant or authentic data that is a previously identified known plant specimen and such a process of determination of correct name of a plant is called species determination. To determine the correct identification of a species, the person should have knowledge of taxonomic methods, manuals and other resources. Expertise in identification of plants is an additional prerequisite. To begin with, it is assumed that a classification exists and the plants have been already assigned the names. There are numerous kinds of resources from where the correct authentic identification can be retrieved. These are called taxonomic documents. These include general taxonomic index, floras, monographs, manuals, revisions, periodicals, etc. All these are basically various types of taxonomic documentations which we will be discussing now. In order to help a researcher to correctly, conveniently and quickly ascertain the name of an unknown plant, many of these resources are provided with keys. There is an enormous amount of taxonomic literature that exists where details of any species or regarding taxonomic aspects of plant are given, including identification, classification, nomenclature, etc. Now, a few examples of important plant index to vascular plants are Index Coensis Tantarum Phanerogarum, as I already discussed, Index Coensis was published by the Royal Botanic Garden, which is in Kew. There are two volumes and 20 supplements of it and the last one was published way back in 1996. This work is a cornerstone to the literature on the systematics of flowering plants. The compilation of original work was made possible by Charles Darwin and it was compiled at the Royal Botanic Garden Kew by B.D. Jackson and his clerical assistants under the direction of Sir J.D. Hooker. The original two volumes of Index Coensis listed 400,000 names of plant species which were published starting from 1753 to 1895. Now moving on to another example of taxonomic indexes. The important name comes in a mind is Grey Herbarium Card Index which is published from Howard University, Cambridge from USA and a card index has database accounting for all new names and new combinations applied in any category of flowering plants and pteridophytes of the western hemisphere. It had covered around 287,225 cards for taxa published since 1873. It provides invaluable information as it accounts for latent names which were given to the vascular plants since 1885. Now moving on to another example of important part of taxonomic documentation which is flora. A flora is a work dedicated to plants of a particular region and also usually restricted to a major segment of plant kingdom such as say vascular plants, flowering plants, etc, etc. There are numerous floras that account for all vascular or seed plants. A flora provides an inventory of plants occurring in a definite area. It is usually authenticated by citation of herbarium specimens and their location. So it is customary to arrange the plants in a known recognized system of classification with Bentham and Hooker, Angler Prantle system of classification, Hutchinson or any other. It generally provides a key to identification of plants recorded in the flora. Field study is important ingredient for preparation of an inventory. Some of the features that taxonomist records during making of an inventory are number one, they find out the texture of a plant, habit, 
they see the size, units, the fragrance, pollinating agents, station or location, frequency, etc. Then they also record habitat type, other associated plants, soil type, soil pH, exposure to sun, direction of habitat, elevation, etc. Most importantly, vernacular names are also taken into record. It is recommended that the inventory should mention whether the recorded specimen or species are indigenous, that is, are they local? Second, are they naturalized, that is, are they fully established in that area? Are they reproducing? Are they migrating or expanding in the new area? Number third, they are also seen that are or maybe the species are introduced. Introduced that is brought deliberately by man without cultivation and then introduced in a new area or are they adventive that is they entered an area by means but unable to meet competition. So, all these are recorded while making up a flora. Now, some examples of world floras are the natural history of plants by Balian. Another world flora which is famous is genera plantarum which was written by Bentham Han Uhukar. Die natural lichen flensen familian was written by Angler and Prantl. Another world flora which is uh, well known is the families of flowering plants by Hutchinson. There is North American flora written by Britain and a handbook of British flora by Bentham. Moving on to some of the important Asian floras, we cannot forget about herbaceous flora of Darudun, which was published by C. R. Babu. Then flora of Indian desert scientific publishers have basically uh, published Asian flora, which was written by M. M. Bhandari. Flora of Upper Gangetic Plain and the adjacent Shivalik and sub Himalayan tracts was written by Duthi and flora of British India was written by Sir J. D. Hooker. Flora of Ladakh has been written by Ms. P. Kachru and Indian medicinal plants are written by Kirtikar. Now moving on to another segment of taxonomic documentations that is monographs. A monograph is defined as the complete account as can be made at a given time of any one family tribe or genus, nothing being neglected of it. It is a worldwide in its scope and application. It reviews all taxonomic treatments that have been made in a particular taxon. So, it basically provides a detailed study of any plant taxa which is studied. It synthesizes all available cytological, genetical, morphological, anatomical, paleobotanical and ecological studies of the taxon by its author, co-worker or others. Considering the large number of disciplines that are undertaken, it needs several types of patient study for writing a single monograph. All elements of the tree ties are accounted for by dichotomous keys. I will be taking up keys in the, uh, very soon in this lecture itself. Full synonyms and complete descriptions, precise designation of types together with the notes as to where the types are deposited, the citation of specimens examined, the distributional ranges and notes on the habitats and discussion of taxonomic and nomenclatorial considerations. Some of the example are the most famous one being Pinus Botanical Monograph which was published by Panchanan Maheshwari is an example of a monograph. Now moving on to manuals which is another type of taxonomic documentation that helps in studying a taxa. What is a manual? It is a book that contains information on the area of coverage and keys and description to the families, genera and species. It includes the accepted scientific name followed by the author of that name and major synonyms. Information on infraspecific taxa that is the taxa which are below the rank of species is also provided along with ecological and distributional data and common names. 
Many manuals have been revised and reprinted numerous times and such manuals become the standard reference for the flora of a particular area. A modern floristic researcher diverts much attention to typification, nomenclature, distribution and ecology in addition to the basic comparative morphology. So we get a lot of information about the texa to manuals. Few examples of manuals are Gray's Manual of Botany by Fernald, A Manual of Aquatic Plants by Facet, Manual of Cultivated Plants by Bailey. Moving on to revisions, another way, another way of documentation of taxonomic data available. So revisions differ from a monograph being much, much less in degree of scope and completeness. It generally accounts for only a single genus or a section of a large genus. So revisions are generally restricted to a continent or smaller geographical area. These may contain reviews of previous publications and are most of times based on herbarium sheets. The bibliographies of Pritzel, Jackson, Reader and Merrill um, have list several thousands of monographs and has revisions. Now moving on to periodicals. What are periodicals? They are publication appearing at regular intervals. Each issue is called a number and collectively these numbers comprise a volume. A scientific society may publish a monthly serial to provide a source of publication for a variety of relatively short papers contributed by its members together with the records of its own proceedings. Such a periodical is usually called journal or annals or a bulletin or proceeding. Periodicals most frequently used in taxonomic studies are as follows. The Annals of Royal Botanic Garden, Kolkata, Journal of Linnean Society, Botany, London, Records of Botanical Survey of India, Kolkata. Now, moving on to taxonomic keys. What is a key? It is an artificial device or an arrangement for determination of names of plants included in it. A botanical key can be defined as a device for easily identifying an unknown plant by a sequence of choices between two or more statements. A key thus represents one kind of taxonomic literature. The first key was introduced in 1778 by French botanist Lemarck for the identification of names of the plants both fresh material as well as dried herbarium materials can be used. The critical observations that a person determining the specimen need to record are its habit, phylotexy, phylotexy means arrangement of leaves on the plant, on the branches, the shape, the apex of leaf, margins, venation of a leaf, the trichome characteristics, the floral features, presentation, ovule number, the fruit type of that plant, etc. A good key is a synopsis presenting graphically the technical characteristic which in general or in aggregate differentiates taxa. The most common form of keys present the user with a series of pairs of contrasting statements which are called couplets. The user is called upon to compare the plant under determination with the first of these pairs to decide which one of the two contrasting statements apply better to the plant. The key then further directs the user to appropriate following pairs until the given plant specimen is named. Some of the characteristics of key are number one, a key should be reliable and constant. It should be appropriate for the area from where the plant to be identified was collected. Say for example, plants collected from Delhi may or may not occur in South India. So therefore, 
If we are using key for plants of South India, they may not help in identification of the plants which are present in Delhi. It can be used with ease and certainty of naming a plant. It should employ macroscopic characters that are easily observable instead of microscopic or which require sensitive instruments. The statements should always be positive, say this is present or that character present instead of absent. It is desirable that user is provided with a series of choices between two mutually exclusive and parallel statements called couplets. Then the initial word of a couplet should refer to a plant or a plant part that is say plant, stem, leaf, flower, fruit etc. So the couplet should start with these words. The initial word of each lead that is a statement of a couplet must be same and two consecutive couplets should not begin with the same word. If one couplet uses one part of a plant, leaf, flower as the first word, then the next couplet should use a contrasting character for identification. Both vegetative and reproductive characteristics are used in a couplet. The initial word of a couplet should be a noun referring to plant or plant part. This means that in the key the plant part should be mentioned first and its description must be mentioned afterward. For example, if we are talking about leaves, so if we say the leaf margins or the leaf shape, leaves entire or pinnate, so we shall be writing leaves entire or leaves pinnate and not entire leaves, entire pinnate. We should write flower actinomorphic or flowers zygomorphic. We should use the word flower first and then its characteristic which are contrasting. Three or more characters in a couplet should be avoided. So for construction and use of a key, we talk the taxonomic keys are made by using a number of contrasting characters to divide a larger group of plants into smaller and smaller groups. For example, the plants with vasculature versus plants without vasculature. We can also group plants uh, and we can make smaller groups based on vascular plants with seed versus vascular plants without seeds. We can also further group them based on the enclosure of seeds, say plant which are enclosed seeds or plants which have naked seeds. Then further we can move on and we can classify and we can just uh, group them further based on the seeds seeds with embryos which have two cotyledons versus seeds with embryo which have only one cotyledon. So this slide shows basically uh, the weak grouping of land plants. So as I told you that we start up with one character or two character and we start dividing the uh, plant and group into smaller and smaller groups. So in this you can see that plants are first, land plants are first divided into plants without vasculature that is the lower plants, the bryophytes and pteridophytes and another group is plants with vasculature. So we divided the plants with vasculature that is the higher gymnosperms and angiosperms again uh, further into two groups based on whether the seeds are present or whether the seeds are absent. So we group them into seedless plants and the plants with vasculature and which also have seeds. Now this again is further grouped into seeds which are naked that are exposed or seeds which are enclosed in the fruit. So the enclosed seeds part is again bifurcated and we group them into another smaller category based on embryos which have two cotyledons or embryos with just one cotyledon. So in this way we start classifying and we start grouping the plants for identification and creation or construction of taxonomic keys. Some other characteristics or pairs that are often used are herbaceous versus uh, woody habit, actinomorphic versus uh, zygomorphic flowers, perianth present or perianth absent, ovary superior versus ovary inferior. We actually try to take up demarcating contrasting characters to build up a key. Also it is very important to obtain as much information as possible 
about the characters of the taxa to be identified. Selection of a proper key is also necessary to arrive at quick correct identification of an unknown taxon. It is also necessary to apprise oneself to various terms of glossary and abbreviations prior to reading of a key as without the understanding of the terms and what they mean we would never be able to come and conclude a new taxon and understand the key in first place. So to arrive at correct name it is advisable to verify the results obtained through the use of a key by comparing the unknown specimens with an illustration or with a herbarium specimen. So the summarization of the steps which are the prerequisite for the preparation of the key are number one it should be dichotomous, number two first word of the couplet should be identical, the second part of the couplet should be contrasting, we should avoid range of characters in a couplet. Statement of the couplet should be positive. The characters or features chosen should be easily observable. Leads of the consecutive couplets should not begin with the same words. The couplets of a key may be numbered say 1, 2, 3 or lettered A, B, C etc. We shall understand faults and limitation of a key as well. If a given key is not working properly, maybe it is faulty. For example, as mentioned above, the key must be appropriate for the area to be useful. Sometimes the characters mentioned in a key are quite fictitious and are not really observable in the specimen. Sometimes even if in the given pair, it characters are contrasting, they are not distinct. The choice of good characters can also be of no use if they are not properly presented. Say leaves are large or small. So if we say large and small, we will never be able to come to a proper conclusion. Instead dimensions provided could be of help. The choice of an intermediate character in the plant to be named is unhelpful. Say, if the choice provided is the number of flowers of the inflorescence is 2 to 10 or say 10 or more, so it would be difficult to choose the alternative when the plant in hand has say 7 to 12 flowers in its inflorescence. So where will we then group it? Instead, we should have more precise information or we shall choose only those characteristics which are which doesn't have intermediate choice or intermediate character. Keys could be difficult to use if the plant to be named is from extreme environmental conditions or new or a hybrid or previously unreported. It is also not possible that the author has mentioned many species than actually present in the given geographical area. So I will sum up the lecture today by uh, concluding that keys and all these various taxonomic documentations help us in identification in classifying plants and are very very useful in the study of plant systematics. In the upcoming lecture, I will be discussing various types of keys and few examples of various types of keys. Thank you.